Reflex mode is there for a couple of reasons. One, it lets players kind of bring the game down to a speed that's manageable, especially as the game progresses, things can get really hectic and it can be hard to sort of manage everything that's going on screen. And also, slow mode is really cool. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of PlayStation Underground. You got Tim here. I'm joined by Gillen. Hey there. And we are so excited to be checking out Rollerdrome. We are joined by Andreas Yanikaris, who is lead designer on Rollerdrome at Roll7. Hey, Andreas, how's it going? Very good. Very happy to be here. And uh, thanks for having me. We're going to be jumping into some gameplay that has been pre-recorded and provided by Roll7 here for us to, to dive into. Can you tell us a little bit about what we're looking at right now, how far into the game this takes place? This is the fourth level in the game. It's taking place in the Houston Mall, which is a fictional mall set somewhere in possibly America. The game sort of takes place in the near future, 2030, and it's like a televised blood sport where you've got these competitors. In our case, we've got our Kara Hassan here with a helmet and a red jumpsuit, and then you've got all these house players. So at this point in the game, you know, we're introducing different house players slowly, and you can see there, there's like a few guys stood around some baseball bats. They're like a sort of grunt enemy, like pretty low level. Just don't get near them and you probably won't take any damage. Not guys you want to run into in a mall anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I can speak on that in a moment, but actually, yeah, I'll tell you what, I'll give you a bit of context for that. Um, it is, it's like this sort of global sporting event. And whilst they do have like purpose-built arenas, it's also a bit like maybe like you know how in some F1 races they'll go to a city and they'll like block off streets and they'll kit it up with like barriers and stuff like that and they'll sort of they'll fit the city out with, with everything that's required to host the event. Yeah. They're, they're, you know, the, the corporation behind the Roller Drone Championship are doing something very similar here and that's that's why it's taking place in a mall, if that makes sense. No, I love it. So um, just talking about some of the mechanics that we're seeing on screen here. Maybe we'll kick off with the combo meter on the right hand side. So how does that work in the game? Obviously all your tricks and grinds and various sort of skating feats will score points. Uh, the combo is actually incremented by making kills, right? So every, you see here, every time uh, Kara makes a kill on screen, that number is going to increment. And so, uh, you know, there's always a timer. You can see like the fill on the number is basically like your countdown before your combo times out and it, it gets banked. But uh, doing damage to enemies will like kind of top the timer up to keep it going. And conversely, taking damage from enemies will deplete it. So basically, you know, these, this is just reinfor reinforcing all the things we want the player to do. We want them to damage and kill enemies to get the combo. We want them to do tricks to get score and we want them to avoid taking damage. And if they do all those things, they're gonna get big scores, big combos, and perform well. That's gonna bear, like, bear, you know, they're gonna, the, the, within the fiction of the sport, it was, a, it was a good run. Got you, that's cool. And obviously, as just keep moving seems to be the thing as well. We're yeah. seeing some dodges, um, and is that reflex mode as well? Um, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, certainly can. So like, uh, you know, it's a very fast paced game. Um, skating games generally are. There's a lot of forward momentum and we want the player to always keep moving. Otherwise, they're basically, they're going to get hit. They're going to get hurt. Mm. Um, so the reflex mode is there for a couple of reasons. One, it lets players kind of bring the game down to a speed that's manageable, especially as the game progresses, things can get really hectic. Uh, and it can be hard to sort of manage everything that's going on screen. And also, slow mo is really cool. Yeah. <laughs> and it makes for some really sort of cinematic type moments. So dramatic. Yeah, I guess we got like the other thing you're seeing here is that you know players are going to have to dodge around a lot. And you know, there's a do there's a dodge button. They can use it pretty much in any scenario, whether they're just skating, grinding, whether they're airborne. They can they can always perform a dodge, and they're going to be using that a lot to uh, avoid taking damage from enemy attacks and uh, you can also use it to like make quick sort of directional changes to your movement whilst you're skating around as well. We've jumped to another level here so where are we now in terms of uh, arenas? Yeah so this is the uh, I think it's called the Eager Resort uh, this is level seven 
in the game. Things have stepped up a little notch here. We're up in a sort of uh, sort of mountain-based uh, ski resort, the kind of place where you know the the real elites come and, and make big decisions about uh, you know where things where things are going and sort of maybe buy and sell, make deals for buying and selling military hardware and that kind of thing. Um, and this has been one of the places that uh, Matterhorn have kitted out for part of the um, part of the cons like contests and to sort of demonstrate the might of some of their beefier um, toys. You can see, like a moment ago, we had uh, that um, robot, the Mecha Brute, yeah, which is uh, equipped with flamethrowers and rocket launchers and and such. And looks like you have to switch up your own weaponry to try and dine it. Very much so, yeah. So like every every enemy in the game has been sort of designed, um, obviously to be cool and to be satisfying to take down, but to pose different threats to the player and you know get the player to play in different ways, to move in different ways, and to to use different weapons for for the task at hand. You can see this player in particular; they switched to the grenade launcher when they were trying to take out that mecha brute. Mm -hmm. And the advantages of that, for instance, are that the grenades do like, you know, they do like a, they splash damage. So you you can, you can like damage both flamethrowers simultaneously with a single shot. Whereas like, you know, like pistols are less effective or the shotgun's going to do damage, but you're going to have to rattle off a lot of shots before you're going to be able to take those weapons out. That's awesome. I am a big sucker for from some, some beefy splash damage. <laughs> well, I know that we are about out of time here, but Dre, I want to say thank you so much for joining us on PlayStation Underground and checking out Rollerdrome here. I know we don't have long to wait. The game's going to be out on PS4 and PS5 on August 16th. That's right.